This is Steve Eraser. As you know, I hate human beings. And you are listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Welcome to the Station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I am Nasty Neal. This is Annabelle Lecter. Mm -hmm. And we are joined by Bree Olson of Human Centipede 3. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm wonderful. How are you? Excellent. Great. Very Hi. happy to have you with us. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. Just uh, a few weeks ago, we saw you in person at the premiere in L.A., and uh, what was that event like for you? And was that the first time that you saw the finished film? It was the first time that I saw any of it. Yeah, um, after shooting, so it was it was uh, amazing. It had been such a long time since we shot it, especially so so many things came flooding back to me as I watched it, and um, I was like, wow! I was just I was really impressed with how they put it together. It was really cool. Yeah, at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. It was like. Yeah. Uh, one of my uh, fans on Twitter, they pointed out to me, they're like, how cool is that? That you had a premiere at the Chinese theater. I'm like, oh, yeah, my life is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to set things for you. Uh, I know that you want to grow in your acting career. This is kind of, I think, a hard start because from what we understand, Tom Six is so great to work with. What are your expectations going forward? You know, I don't know. Um when I had done that film, I was pretty ripe. I was really new to the acting scene. So it kind of made me cringe watching my acting. I'm like, oh, God, because um, I've come such a long way since with all my classes and everything and just experience. I, I did live theater for a long time as well since then. And uh, I so I really don't know. I feel like I'm more seasoned as far as expectations go. And I know how hard actors work. I mean, we can just look at um, Brian Cranston, for example, with Breaking Bad. He was around for, gosh, at least 20 years before he finally got a show like Breaking Bad, you know? And it's like that for a lot of actors and actresses. And only, truly, only the strong survive. And I feel like that's not more true for anything than Hollywood. You have to really, really want it and be super, super passionate about it and not be doing anything else. And I feel like my hands are just a little bit in everything right now. I love, I love acting, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm really at a crossroads in my life of where, where am I going to go now? So I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's just risk because you said you really have to de devote your life to, to trying to succeed as an actress. So do you feel that that's kind of where the fear comes from, that you've just got to say, this is what I'm doing, the end, and just hope that you can make it? I mean, gosh, you know, when I if I would have started when I was like 15, I feel like I would be a lot more hardcore about it. Like, because I've only put in, like, I started when I'm 25 and that's really late for a woman. And there, yeah, there's plenty of beautiful, great actresses at 30 and at 40, but they have seriously been doing it since they've been teens. You know, it's very rare instances where someone comes in in their mid to late twenties and they start in the industry. So, um, you know, and like I said, it just takes years and years to build up. So I'm like, I don't know if this is the right move for me because because of my age so i'm not sure mm -hmm. um having a name recognition do you think that's is is helpful or is it also a detriment because i assume you know people already know um, you but at the same time maybe you know i, don't... I would say 80 percent helpful because 40 percent the people you know they are like just they're curious. They want to get me in the doors. The other 40% is like, fine, we'll see her anyway is whatever. And then it works in my benefit because they have such the people that were skeptics. They have so low expectations of when I come into the audition. And mm -hmm. So what, what would be a regular actress coming in, maybe they would expect more. And then they're just really blown away that I actually took the time and that I know my marks and my cues and I really studied and I'm completely off the book. And I think they're just so impressed, like, oh, wow, they treat me like a five-year-old, you know, like, oh my <laughs> gosh, you can talk and walk at the meeting. And uh, so, you know, and I, I feel like it kind of works for me. <laughs> um, so I can't even be mad at it. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, this is fine. I'll take mm -hmm. it. 
even when you mentioned earlier about uh, watching your acting on Human Centipede 3, um, you really picked kind of a perfect film for that because that worked within the movie. Because you had Tom Six, who's playing himself, and he's clearly not, you know, a fantastic actor. And everyone else, you know, even their performances, it's, uh, you know, the kind of comedy it is, it works for that film. You Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, um, uh, Roberts, uh, what's his first name? Um, I don't Eric, even care, Eric but Roberts. I can't remember his first name right now. <laughs> uh, Eric Roberts. Uh, Eric, Roberts. Eric, I think Eric, Eric Roberts. I should have been like, Mr. Roberts. He came in like a boss, dude. Like his acting is incredible, right? He makes mm-hmm. us all just look like shit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> but like, he's on it. Like I thought his acting was impeccable. Now in person, he was nothing but rude to me. But like, really? his acting is great. So kudos to him. <laughs> so, well, how, what, what, can you, uh, can you go further into that? How, what, what did he, what, how was he rude to you? Um, so I had a personal makeup artist on set and we were really stoked that he was there. You know, we, we hadn't heard of him before, but when we heard he was, I know this is so cliche and I'm sure this is why he has an attitude. When we heard he was Julia Roberts' brother, we're like, Oh my gosh, like how cool (laughs) is that? And he's an actor too and blah, blah. And then we start looking them up and then we got super excited. We were like legit excited. He was there. And so, um, I, I was like, no, he seems like really off. Like he, like he doesn't want to be bothered. I want to get a picture with him. But my makeup artist was like, well, I want to get one with him. And she's so super sweet. And so she went up to him and asked him and he was like, oh, no, honey, don't bother me right now. And then but he was like, I'm busy. But then after she walked away, he literally just like stood there doing nothing. And I'm like, oh, man. And then the first time when he first walked in, because we had already been shooting for like 20 days, so we had established, you know, the family set. You know how it gets when you shoot for a long time on movies or on TV shows. Everyone is so cool with each other. And he shows up. And, you know, everyone is, of course, like, oh, Tom Six, you know, he's like the biggest deal on set. He is the man. Like, Tom is is the guy. And Tom walks in because he's, like, so super sweet, comes in to shake Robert's hand as soon as he gets there. And we're all in the makeup room. And Robert looks him up and down and says, nice costume. And I was just like oh shit I'm like no he didn't but Tom totally was he was so classy he just laughed and he was like thank you you know (laughs) but I was like dude you are so rude like I can't even remember some of the other instances but he was just a dick (laughs) it's crazy I mean the guy just gets work and work and work so he can just we just saw uh, a couple months ago uh, premiere for a small Boston film that he was in and it was pretty much the same same kind of feeling about him from those people as well. He's just so much work. He can afford to just do whatever he wants, I guess. Yeah, he's a hella good actor. Like, if you watch it, it's like, and it's funny watching everyone else. I'm not not trying to put any of the other actors down. I just think that Eric was the best actor out of it. And also Robert Lasardo is really great as well. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I guess maybe Eric had a lot more like regular speaking type roles. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, he just, he killed it. He killed it. So, I mean, I can admit that, you know, like he's a great actor, not nice to me. I didn't have a good experience with him, but he's a good actor mm-hmm. and he was professional on set, I guess. Yeah. How about everyone else on set? Everyone else, uh, for the most part, were, were cool with you or? Everyone was amazing. I mean, amazing. They were just, I I don't know, like, everyone was so super sweet. We all, like, I mean, from craft services to, like, we're all Facebook friends, you know? So it's, like, the director all the way down to craft. Nobody's title or anything made anybody a certain way. Everyone was on the exact same page. We were all just super cool with each other. It was an amazing experience. And I told them, I said, I'm spoiled because now any movies I go and do after this, I know it'll never be as cool as this again. Uh, and like, so chill and have such a great crew. Mm-hmm. Who did you bond with in particular? Were there a few people that you got very close with? Um, you know, I, I smoked a lot of cigarettes with Alona six. <laughs> <laughs> We picked up like a smoking habit on the on set, um, just in our spare time. Whenever we had a few extra minutes, 
we would just go back and she's so sweet and I just don't think I could get over how her and her brother because they're both so sweet and I couldn't get over how normal they were and like how normal their lives were but that they were creating projects like this <laughs> and it just really blew my mind mm-hmm. now which came first uh, the the funnier die uh short or are you being cast in the film the uh no the, i had already shot the film after the funny okay. or die thing like i'm telling you we shot this film forever ago we shot this film gosh what two years ago and how did you get involved in the movie to begin with oh so i mean just the usual they emailed me and uh they were like hey would you like to audition and i was like Yes, and I was at the Super Bowl, though. I mean, thank goodness the Super Bowl was already over, so it was, like, the next day, but I like to spend, like, a week wherever I am. And uh, so I was like, yes, I would love to, but I'm here. Can I come another day, blah, blah? And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to, and I mean, it was the Super Bowl, so it's, like, impossible to find flights. So I'm like, okay, I I'm, I go out and uh managed to find oh i actually i flew back private because i couldn't find a commercial flight back that's how packed it was from the super bowl and i flew back um and i auditioned for the part and they were like so you saw one i'm like yeah and they're like and you saw two and i'm like yeah and they're like really i'm like yes (laughs) and they're like why (laughs) <laughs> I was like, uh, because one was so crazy and two. And I seriously think that was like my golden ticket. <laughs> are you are you a horror movie fan in general or what drew you to the human centipede films? I you know, I did not know. I I don't watch any horror movies. I've never seen a horror movie in my adult life except for Human Centipede one and two. <laughs> I have no idea why I had watched them. I really don't. I mean, one, I just I was like I think I went and seen it in theaters, it may have been in theaters and like someone was like, This sounds so weird, let's go see it. I'm like, Okay and then I remember two very specifically. It was on Netflix and I was with my best uh girlfriend and she was like hey, like, here's two on here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, let's watch it. You know, one was crazy. Let's see what happens in two. Uh-huh. And then we watched it. And, yeah, that was it. I don't know. I mean, I other than that, I've seen, like, of course, like, the classics, like Freddy Cougar, Nightmare on Elm Street, like, all those when I was a kid. But in my adult life, yeah, no, I've never seen any other horror movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's amazing. Two is quite different than one. And three is quite different than one and two. Yes, they're all they're all very different from uh, one another. Uh, do you have a preference it, between? It I, I know maybe you don't want to say this because you work with uh, both actors, but do you have a preference with, uh, between one and two? Um. Hmm. I think I would say one is my favorite because you connected with each of the characters so much, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would go with that. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, out of meeting, so when I I was on set and I went around the corner and Lawrence Harvey was walking in the other direction, <laughs> I hadn't met him yet, and I literally screamed when I saw him because I was that freaked out. Mm-hmm. I was, because all I knew him from was from the movie. Mm-hmm. So I just, I screamed. He terrified me. And then meeting Dieter didn't scare me at all. So I was like, oh, okay. So I guess like two freaked me out more, but one was my favorite. Mm-hmm. I had a similar reaction when I first, uh, we we're both friendly with, uh, with Lawrence. And, uh, the first time I met him though, I'd only just seen the movie recently. And I, and actually in the review by, uh, Roger Ebert, he was saying, like, that was how the real guy was, and, like, that Tom Six found, like, a mentally handicapped guy in the street, and so I'm like, oh, man, I don't know what this guy's going to be like, but, and then you meet him, he's a, he's really the sweetest guy. He is so sweet. We had such a good time on set. He's, like, he's very huggable. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how many hugs we exchanged, but I was just, like, going around giving everyone hugs, and he loved his morning hug every morning, and was just, like, so happy and smiling every time he saw me. Mm-hmm. It's cute as that. Do you think a Daisy and, and Dwight, uh, uh, do you think they would have worked as a couple within the film? <laughs> <laughs> they 
would have totally worked. They should have made that happen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I agree. So you said, happy. Yeah, you said you weren't uh, afraid of Dieter, but he's a very um he's very approachable stuff, but he is a kind of an intense guy. Uh what was he like to work with? It was really it was cool. I mean, he he definitely stayed on his own, you know, he would get his plain food and he they always set aside a certain plate for him and he would go eat it by himself um but then like in the makeup room and everything like we talked and you know he got I got him to start laughing and smiling and stuff and before I knew it like he had loosened up and I had heard on the other set that he you know wasn't like that so he had definitely like really um his demeanor was let down a lot you know but he was he still it had more serious moments, but there were cracks through it, you know, like mm-hmm. he's like, okay, I can laugh and smile and stuff. So that was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, at the premiere, uh, during the Q and a, and we had, uh, we had Dieter on last week on the show and, uh, in both parts, he talked about, uh, you, that you're a type of actor he really likes to work with someone who's not, uh, afraid of, of the subject matter or, you know, to be physical on set. Um, when he said that on the Q and a, uh, you know, I'm sure that must've made you proud. Oh, that was so nice to hear from someone of that stature. I, it was like, that was so amazing. I'm serious. I'm so humbled. Seriously. Um, I just, I come from a very hard working background. I mean, I've worked ever since I was 12 years old, you know, detasseling corn in the cornfields and then, you know, onto the industry, even though they're like, Oh, it's just sex. It's like, it's not, it's a lot of travel. It's a lot of work. And, you know, you really have to work to make a name for yourself. Um, And so, and then to take that work ethic and put it into the projects that people give me an opportunity to be a part of, I will work as hard as I can and do anything by any means necessary to make everyone happy on set and so um yeah any anything they said they're like are you comfortable with are you okay with this i'm like i'm down let's do it yes absolutely and um yeah it's it's great to see that it was so appreciated for sure mm-hmm. was there any particular uh scene that was uh was difficult to uh to film no no it was it was great Mm-hmm. Now, uh, transitioning from uh, adult movies to, uh, you know, be trying to become, you know, a legit actor, uh, was there any, you know, because this movie has, especially your role has a lot of uh, sex involved in the movie, uh, did anyone tell you, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that, or did you yourself have any uh, second guesses about that? No, none at all. I had zero reservations. Um, like I said, I I can't believe that movies that I had seen, they contacted me directly to ask me to come audition. Yeah. I was so freaking beside myself. I was like, yes. You know, like, I, I hit them up after I did the follow-up, like, hi, just checking in. <laughs> you know, like, I waited by my phone to hear their response. I, I basically, like... I, I figuratively held my breath until I got a response back from them. And when I got the part, I jumped up and down. I was alone. I'm screaming, jumping up and down, like, yes, I got it. I was so stoked. Mm-hmm. What, um, well, I guess you did. Well, did you come in for an audition? And like, uh, was there any particular scene that you, that you, in the audition that you, uh, you screened for? Gosh, they had they had a little bit of everything, they, but they they're very they were very confidential about the movie, mm-hmm. and um, like they didn't email scripts or anything. <laughs> they sent them like through the mail, like mail, mail, <laughs> like legit. And my scripts had you know my name across every page. Like it was so so like I've never had anything like it. Everyone else just there like uh, email, fuck it, like whatever. <laughs> They were no. Uh, so even in the audition, they wouldn't. Get, I did not have a script. I didn't have any sides. They were just like, okay. I went in and they're like, imagine this is happening now. Act this way. Imagine now this and act this way. And so that's just what I did. So there wasn't really anything in particular. No, but it was an hour long. Like mm-hmm. it was, yeah. Now, I know some uh, a lot of the other actors in throughout all the Human Centipede films were like picked by uh, Tom Six and Lona specifically for the roles. And you said you know they contacted you. Did they ever tell you you know like uh, what it was about you that they wanted you for that role? Yes, I asked them. I, I said, are, are, "Did you audition any other porn stars?" And I think they said. 
what did they say? I think they said two porn stars and the rest were playboy playmate type girls. Um, so they, they wanted like a sexual icon type of role. Mm -hmm. Um, and I asked who, and I tried the whole time. Alona would not let up. I'm like, just tell me. me (laughs) And she wouldn't, she wouldn't. So I don't know. I don't know who the other girls are. Yeah. Yeah. You want to, you know, you want to know what company you're in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, (laughs) um, earlier you mentioned, you know, doing live theater and, uh, how 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 has that experience you think really helped you as an as an actor, and uh, what type of uh, what type of plays or theater you have you done? Oh gosh, so I was with Second City for almost two years um, oh, nice. uh, in Hollywood, and I did the show called TMI, which they now just transitioned to um, a studio now. Now they're not at the theater, and they decided not to go with them because my schedule is just getting very hectic, and I'm like okay, I think two years under my belt is enough because, you know, you don't get paid. You know, it's like you just do it for the art of it and to get the experience and be grateful that you were chosen to be able to be a part of that because they do auditions and they cut people every year. And so to be able to be a part of a cast that performs live comedy theater in Hollywood, I was like, wow, beside myself that, you know, they they thought that I was good enough for that. And so... um It was crazy. We would, it was like one weekend a month for me and we would uh, get the, do a read through on Wednesday and then we would get the final scripts on Friday and then perform in front of a live audience on Sunday. And it was an hour long show and it was about, um, about 20 to 30 skits and I would be in at least half of them. So yeah, it was a lot. It was very SNL. Um, so it was crazy. Yeah. Like memorizing scripts that quickly playing several different characters, performing in front of a live audience, you know, being able to work with so many different types of people because the cast was a a decent size. So every, every weekend that I did it, it was a, a, a mishmash of, you know, different people getting cast throughout because it's just everyone's availability because everyone's working actors, you know? So it's like, I, it was always a, a different um, cast and yeah, it was, it was intense. It was really intense. It was like actors boot camp. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very, very impressive. Uh, if you could get paid the same amount of money to do any kind of acting in whatever kind of genre, what would be ideal for you? Uh, or, um, I, I love, mm, you know, I used to think that comedy was like an easy way out, but now the more I've done it, I think that it's honestly the most difficult to do. Um, there's the, you know, the dramatic acting and everything. And I was always drawn to that because I, I had the amateur attitude of, well, who can't scream or who can't act angry, you know? Um, But when it comes to comedy, it's like not only do you have to have everything else, but you also just have to have that comedic timing. And I don't know. I'm just really drawn to, to the comedic scene, the people that are in comedy. I just feel like, I don't know. There's just the, they're clever and their wits and their craziness. They're just, they're they're insane. The people are like clinically insane people, and I just I love them for it. Mm-hmm. it it's it's amazing and it's weird, and I think that's that's home for me. And I was kind of mad that I always get typecasted into the comedy role, but people say that I'm so natural at it, and I'm like I feel like I'm not, and I feel like you guys, I feel like everyone's just laughing at me and not with me. But the more that I've worked at it, you know, and really. Um, try to perfect my craft I'm like okay people are are laughing like like I'm making people laugh and that's a really good feeling and I feel like nothing feels better than that and to think that I can make people happy and smile and laugh I feel like there's nothing better in the world like it's so cool do you think getting the immediate reaction from from a crowd when you're doing live theater and live comedy uh helps you understand what is funny then what works because you have the people right there laughing Oh my, absolutely. Like 
so I'm shooting uh, Brie Does Comedy. It's a Kickstarter that we um, had done. And so I'm going to be shooting. But um, I'm doing a stand-up comedian. I play a stand-up comedian in it. Like, oh, Brie tries stand-up. It's basically like my real life, but like poking fun at it. You know, so like Brie tries sketch comedy. Brie tries this. Brie tries that. And um, so, yeah, I do this one where I'm doing stand-up. And stand-up is so fucking hard. Like, now when I watch, like, I always knew it was hard. But then when I actually did it, I'm like, wow. <laughs> and it's like, I do have a bit a natural thing to it. But I tend to like how I do how I'm in this interview right now. And I just keep on going on and on. And that's where I lose it. I'm like, well, how do they know how to stop? It's literally like they just have a, an hour long script memorized in their head. And then they go on stage and do this hour long script. And it's just crazy to me that they're able to do that. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So you pref- did you prefer to go uh, you know, scripted or just kind of uh, ad lib, I guess? I love ad lib, but like I said, with the problem with me is ad lib can be a danger zone because sometimes I will keep going too long, you know, and it's very important as in stand up is very important to get to the point. As soon as people laugh, next subject, you know, boom, boom, boom. Stand up is so important for that. And that's literally what kills or makes the comedians. Like you have to be able to move on and make people laugh constantly. I don't know the exact rules of all the stand up. Like I'm only playing a part, so I don't even know. But I imagine it's like every two minutes, you better be making people like just die laughing. Mm hmm. What kind of films uh, do you yourself enjoy? Are you are you do you mostly watch comedies? Mm, no, I don't watch a lot of comedies. I watch uh, I watch a lot of television. I don't. I'm not that much into movies anymore. I love Game of Thrones, uh, House of Cards. House of Cards is I think overlooked by a lot of people. That's an awesome, awesome show. Dude, people. Okay, Neil, do you watch House of Cards? I don't. No, I've okay, been never. telling them. I, can't, <laughs> I do like. I can't I say like anything Game bad about it. Then mm. I can't. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna give a jab to the people that don't watch House of Cards. But poor Neil over here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I can't, if, if we're not all three in this, then I can't go there. Um, but no, but House of Cards. Yes, is grossly overlooked by people, and it kind of pisses me off that everyone watches Scandal, especially for women. Like, women watch Scandal, and they're like, yeah, woman power, I watch Scandal, I know politics, and I'm women's lib. And I'm like, dude, don't be a fucktard. Go watch House of Cards. It's so much more real. There's so much more political jargon in it. It's so, the the acting, like, everything. I'm like, just stop, stop. Like, I, I mean, I watch both, personally. I love Kerry Washington. She's freaking amazing. Like, everyone on that show is amazing. I've even went and watched one of their panels. That's how much of a fan I am. But House of Cards is so next level and people just need to watch it. It's artistically, it's beautiful. The cinematography, the writing is brilliant. People need to watch that. Anyway, it's yes. House of Cards. Um, Of course, Breaking Bad when it was on Now Better Call Saul. Oh my gosh. It took a while to pick up, but once it picked up, wow, amazing. Um, what else do I like? Oh, don't tell anybody, but I love Nashville. I'm such a like tween. I swear to God, uh, that's an amazing show. <laughs> and oh, Orange is the New Black, super clever. I am in love. Oh my gosh, I can't think of her name at the moment. I'm in love with her though. She's the black chick with short hair. Do you guys watch Orange is the New Black? I don't. No. But now, oh my uh, I'm gonna gosh. write down all these shows. So I, I am a huge fan of uh, Breaking Bad, though, and Better Call Saul. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. I'm looking on my Twitter right now. My Twitter, by the way, is at Brie Olson, and Olson is O L S O N. I'm looking at on my Twitter because I just reposted a picture of this girl from Orange Is the New Black. I mean, she's so freaking hot. Like, she's so hot that I would go back to school and become a doctor, like, just to prove her family wrong of whatever stereotype they think I am. Like, I would, like, not even do anything with my doctorate degree. Just, like, have it just to be, like, prove to her parents that I'm worthy of her, you know? Like, that's the that's the type of beautiful that she is to me. And just, I, I can't find the, the picture. But, yeah, I, I'm in love with her. Definitely my biggest celebrity crush. Um... 
anybody that's going to listen to this that watches Orange is the New Black would totally know what I'm talking about. And then, gosh, I, I don't know what else I watch. I watch a lot. I watch TV. I'm all about TV. Not really any movies, except, oh, oh, the the drummer movie. That was really good. The jazz drumming movie. That was my favorite movie, like, ever. Hmm. I don't know if you guys are like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I know what you mean. It was it was up for a lot of awards. I think the guy uh, won for best uh, supporting yes. actor. Yeah, um, I can't. Used to oh be my on gosh, Oz. I'm shooting myself. That I, yeah, I can't remember the name of it right now, and it's terrible because that's like my favorite movie, and I tell everyone to watch it. I'm like, you have to watch it, but I'm drawing a blank right now. I don't know why, but I love that movie. It's so intense. It's crazy. I don't give a shit about the drums. I do not care about jazz. Jazz is my least favorite type of music, but that just the movie itself, I was blown away. I'm like. This is incredible. I think I watched it five times in a month. Like, it's incredible. I know exactly what movie, because I'm a big fan of the actor who won. He used to be on Oz, which I was I really enjoyed uh, the TV show Oz. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Christopher Maloney. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, he's, he's actually the whole <laughs> cast of Oz. There's a lot of great actors from Oz. And it's always fun to, to see him pop up and uh, so many things afterwards. <laughs> Whoa! Chill out, Harley. Wow. I live in like I live in, in West Hollywood, right off Sunset, and these assholes. Jesus. J.K. <laughs> Simmons is the actor. Let's see here. I, I gotta look this up though, oh, on you, IMDb. <laughs> give Give me the first letter. Give me the first letter, and I'll get it. All right. Uh, is that it? W. Is w- that it? W. I believe that's it. W. Is the first letter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, hmm. What is it? What is it? A uh, whiplash. Yes. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I didn't get that. Whiplash. Whiplash. Yes. The movie Whiplash is the most amazing movie besides The Godfather. Oh, For me excellent. to see that mm-hmm. is amazing. Everybody has to watch it. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of mafia movies. So, uh, God, Goodfellas, Godfather, and that's why I think a lot of uh, big actors are going to t- television because there's so many good TV shows, and a lot of them say that's where the best scripts are. I mean, TV has really turned around. We we'll love that now. Mm-hmm. Have you have you watched um, True Detective? No, I haven't. I've heard mm, a lot of great things. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I I think the name is kind of generic, but uh, the show itself is amazing. I noticed. What uh, is it on? Uh, HBO. Okay, I have HBO now, so I can watch it on there. Yeah. Yeah, the new season's starting soon, but the new season's a totally different cast and a different story. The first season, uh, that's starting to be kind of a thing where uh, it'll be like a season where it's one story arc. Uh, kind of like they do an American Horror Story, where it'll be one, you know, one story, so you don't have to watch multiple seasons. You can just watch the whole season, and it'll have a beginning and an end for that story. And that's how. Uh... Oh no, I'm the kind of person I watched four seasons of Game of Thrones in two days. No, four days. I'm sorry, four seasons, four days. Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh-huh. I will watch every episode. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that. Don't worry yeah. about me. <laughs> I got this down. That's how I got into Breaking Bad. I think I watched the first three seasons uh, right in a row, and then I started watching it, you know, well, when it was, uh, you know, on. That's what's great about Netflix and uh, and the websites and Hulu. cheap DVD. Yeah, Hulu and cheap uh, DVDs now. You can watch, like, whole seasons. Uh, binge watching is what they call it. Oh, yeah, it's, and it's great. It's a great uh, outlet for these television shows because it gets people that would have never otherwise watched them mm-hmm. into them because it's so easy because I think I was never into TV before um, Netflix, really. And then watching, and then, because I'm more like, okay, just whatever's on right now, I just need yeah. to sit down in front of the TV for a second because I've never been a huge TV person. I'll just sit down for a second and watch some. I'm like, okay, I'm good, and then turn it back off and go do something. But <clears throat> being able to watch, uh, <laughs> it's like making people addicts, you know, because it's like, <laughs> oh, I can watch one after another, and then before you know, like, you've been in the house for four days. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you're in your pajamas, you haven't showered. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, what's happening to me? <laughs> yeah. And you think, oh, I'll just watch one more. And then, you know, it's like six hours yeah. later. And <laughs> exactly. And some, exactly. I don't know. So I have cut off times now. There's times when I get to the last season of a show that I've I've watched like that. Then I'll actually get kind of depressed. I'm like, 
oh no, there's only so many more episodes left and I can't watch any more of this. What I don't like is that Netflix puts out their whole season in one day. They just yeah. put it all out. Like Orange is the New Black, they put the whole season in House of Cards. I, I'll watch it all in one day. I'm like, okay, well, here goes my 24 hours. And I watch it all. I just, and then I'm done. I'm like, okay, now I'll, here we go next year. <laughs> yeah, well, you should make you put it out every week, you know, make you wait a little bit. And then, of course, you'd probably hate that. You say, why do they only put out one, one episode a week? I. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> now, I do want to ask about, because uh, I saw a lot of pictures of you on uh, on Twitter wearing a uh, Paul Heyman girl shirt, and myself, is, I'm a Paul Heyman guy, so uh, what's the story there with Paul Heyman? He just hit me up, um, gosh, I forget when this was, maybe a year, maybe more ago, and he was like, hey, do you want to be in this contest? It's kind of last minute, though. And I'm like, okay. And then I joined it, and there were three, like, super hot Australian chicks that had just, like, completely, they were, like, way ahead, and there were a whole bunch of Americans, of course, because it's where it's based. And I jumped ahead of all the Americans, but the Australians, man, they just got, to, like, have this power system going on or something. Um, so I forget if I came in, like, second, or I don't I don't remember exactly how that went. But um, it was really, and so, you know, ever since then, he was like, well, I can't believe you jumped ahead so so far in the contest for coming in so last minute, I'm like, hey, thanks. And so he just gives me a shout every once in a while. I'm like, hey. And he had came here um, to Hollywood for something. And, like, we met up and we shot, like, this little thing on Hollywood Boulevard. And, yeah, we've just been cool ever since. Yeah. Uh, he's he's great. He's one of the best guys in, uh, in WWE for uh, promos. Oh, my gosh. Like, best personality actor ever. Like, so great. Yeah, yeah, and I've been watching him since he was Polly Dangerously back in like the late '80s in WCW. Great stuff. I don't get it, but I, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, when you're at the premiere, um, what is it like to be with the audience there watching the movie? When we when we were at the premiere for Human Centipede three, was that at first like intimidating at all? Like, oh, what if they don't laugh at the things they're supposed to laugh at? But once it started, everyone was totally into it. It's okay. Actually, this is really funny. So I was just one row behind Alona and Tom Six, and Tom decided it would be a great idea to have a um, black little person with him <laughs> carrying uh-huh. his ashtray. Mm-hmm. And I saw that, and I just almost collapsed because, you know, oh my god! And <laughs> so I'm like, oh no, uh, and I'm just like waiting for like a riot or something you know because of this i'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh this is so bad this is so bad what's gonna happen and so surprisingly he was the only person i paid attention to his reactions for the movie because he was sitting right next to tom Uh so or in alona so i'm looking at at this at this dude and he's watching it and I'm just and he's like oh that's nasty you know and like going like this and like saying like comments and stuff and then afterwards I'm like thinking he's just gonna be so shitty like good for being hired to play like this for Tom <laughs> and that he was gonna have a really bad attitude but he came up to me and he was like hey you did a really great job in that movie and I'm like oh my gosh thank you so much dude like thank you that's awesome mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but it's funny. He's the only person I cared about his opinion. That's the only person I was paying attention uh-huh. to. Yeah, I have he... no, I have no idea what, what anyone else was doing. And and he did a wonderful job as as a as a living ashtray. I guess I don't. I don't... It's crazy, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's quite the crowd around, and we're pretty open minded to terrible things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, everyone says that uh, you know because he he has all these crazy things and kind of like his character out on Twitter and out in the world. But uh, everyone, including yourself and everyone we've seen, uh, they always say uh, speak highly of him that he's a very nice guy and he's great to work with. He is so nice and he's so freaking sweet and he brought like a supermodel with him that he's dating to the premiere. I'm like, of course. I'm like, I said it right away. Like at the moment I saw her, I feel bad because I didn't even address her as a person. I looked at her and then looked back at him and I was like, good job, dude. <laughs> like, she's like so super hot 
but he totally deserves it because he's like a really good looking, like nice guy and obviously successful in what he does and like such a visionary. And yeah, he's, he's a super fun guy. Would you, uh, would you be up for uh, working with him in the future? Oh, of course, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned, uh, you're you're filming sometime in in the future, uh, uh, some stuff there. Do you have any other projects coming up? Uh, besides that, I uh, I can't talk about it. I don't have anything that I can talk about right now, like zero enough. I, I have tons coming up, nothing I can talk about. But then after that, after this next year, I'm going to buy an around the world ticket and travel around the world. And um, so I'm going to start planning that come, I don't know, but very soon because I want to start doing it in November. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Any well- where are the places you'd like to travel to most, and why would you like to go to those specific places? What, where are the places that I want to go to the most? Yes, and why do you want to go to those places? Mm, okay. Um, well, I mean, I want to go everywhere. I mean, that's why it's around the world. I, just, I want to go everywhere. The place I want to go the most, I mean, I've already been to every continent except Antarctica and Africa. So I need to get those two out of the way. Antarctica is going to suck. I already looked into it. Like (laughs) you got to take like three planes and a boat and blah, blah, blah. And it's like really stupid. Then you just stand on the ice and you're like, okay, I was here. Bye. And then you you go. But I, I'm like one of those assholes that needs to be like, I've been to every continent. And then someone says, no, you haven't. You haven't been to Antarctica. And I can just pull out my picture and be like, yes, I have, you know? Um, so I need to be able to do that. And uh, and then Africa, because I'm just, like, really fascinated by, you know, just the the geography of it and the animals and everything. I think it's, like, amazing. I think it's amazing. And um, I believe in the scientists that say, you know, that's where everything originated from and, you know, where everyone came from originally. And I just think it's, like, so cool historically, like, to think back on that. And so I'm super stoked about that. Um, and then surprisingly Europe, it's not super high on my list. I've been to Europe and it's like, eh, okay. Like white people that speak a different language, like, uh, I'm over it, you know? Um, but Asia trips me out. I've been to Japan twice and it's like such a mind fuck because you look up at the signs and it's not like they're just different letters that you can put together on your phone and like make sense of it. It's symbols. And it's like, I don't know anything. And the Japanese, they expect you to know their language. They're like how people say the French are assholes and want you to speak French. That's the Japanese are. So you go really? there and you ask them a question and they will answer you back in Japanese. Like, fuck you, American. I don't, I didn't forget that you bombed us, you know? And it's like, Hey dude, it wasn't me. It was like my great grandpa, you know? And so then it's like, and finally they'll like, eventually, like if you're extremely nice, they'll finally speak to you in in English. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know I'm a dumb American. I'm sorry for not knowing your language. Please just tell me how to get to train D like, please. So yeah. (laughs) I no, them. no, they're super, they're super nice. They're, they're like, I love Japanese culture. They are, I wish Americans could adapt to the Japanese culture. They're so respectful of other people's space and their level of noise and just their whole way of life. It's beautiful. And so I'm so excited to explore the rest of Asia and just see all of it. I know Annabelle's been to Japan and uh, she quite enjoyed that, uh, that experience. I would go back. Was there for about a month, and I would go back for a half a year, no problem. I was uh, right outside of Tokyo and traveled a lot into Tokyo and went a few other places, but I I absolutely loved it. I absolutely love it too. I'm just saying, like they are like they they don't mess around. Like once you get outside the touristy areas, like once you're on the trains and you're like trying to go to Kyoto and do this and do that, they're like, you're on your own fold. Like you better figure it out. You're in our yeah, country. I don't know. That's the experience I had. The people that are on any of the trains in some way, it's just no one, but no one talks to each other. No one's no. listening to music. It's on the phone. No one's eating, doing anything. They just sit still and look ahead or they're asleep and that's it yes or reading or reading 
it's it's it is the culture is very strange, but I like that because it's so dramatically different. So that was it was interesting. But I get what you're saying. It is you just you do your own thing. You're supposed to be doing your own thing. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, definitely did not forget about the bombing. Um, that's still going strong over there. <laughs> but um, the younger generation is super cool. They love Americans. They're like, yeah, America. But the older generation, they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I imagine that's kind of like how I feel about like the Germans because of, you know, my family and the whole Holocaust thing. Like, I'm like, I try not to hold it against you guys. But every time I hear German, I'm like, uh, it just sounds like, hey, put that little girl in the ditch. You know, like, I can't help it. Mm. So uh, that never came up with you and Dieter, I, I, I suppose. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm like I said, I mean, I'm totally chill with the, like it's not their fault. Like, well, you know, like I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't like. I don't know if it was their family. Like, it's hard to tell. You know, I can't. I can't like hold. I can't be like, oh, you're German. Fuck you. But yeah, no. I try to like remember that. It's like it's okay. That was a long time ago. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm half German. So. Okay. <laughs> See, I don't hold it against you. Right, it's okay. Right. It's thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. No, if you're going to channel all of it into a person, channel it right to Neil. He can handle it. He's kind of used to it anyway. Uh, I was going to do my German accent, but I won't. Um... Oh, don't, yeah, don't, don't. All right, all right. What, what about, what about, because uh, people might be surprised to have seen pictures of me, but I do like to eat. And so when you're around other, uh, other places in the world, are you a foodie? Do you like to try all uh, the different cuisines? Yeah, you know, I mean, luckily I was, I'm a vegan now, but before when I was doing most of my traveling, I wasn't a vegan yet. So, I mean, I've eaten things that are alive, like, I mean, not on purpose. I didn't even realize it until I looked down <laughs> and I'm like, why is this feel funny in my mouth? And I look down at the bowl and they're just eyes up looking at me, squirming around. I'm like, this is great. Um, this is a Japanese experience, by the way. But, um, yeah, so I, you know, I'm I'm always down to try anything. But now that I'm vegan, I mean, I mean, I'll still try all kinds of stuff. But I, it's, it's obviously limited now. But um, yeah, yeah, I I love all different types of food. There's this. I'm so lucky to live in L.A. Like where all the hippy dippiness is because there's this dude that opened a cheese shop like next to me in the strip mall. And I'm like, dude, your cheese shop is never going to be successful. I'm such a Debbie Downer, right? I'm like, fuck you and your stupid cheese shop. Yeah, right. I'll see you shut down in six months. And so it's just been going, you know, and I see him every day, you know, walking in and doing his thing. And finally, yesterday, two days ago, I walk in there and I'm like, yo, what's up with your cheese, man? (laughs) And he's like this French cuisine, like, artist like chef and he creates these vegan cheeses from nuts and he had me really? try all these different assorted cheeses that are not made from dairy they're dairy free so it's not just for vegans it's for people that have you know dairy problems like they can't handle it mm-hmm. so um i tried these and i'm like oh my gosh there's no way this isn't real cheese i told them i said you are the walter white of cheese <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know. Vegan. He laughed. <laughs> vegan cheese. I, that. I said, because you are the Walter White of cheese. <laughs> That's crazy. I've always thought about going the opposite, where I would just make vegetables out of, like, bacon and cheese. So uh, <laughs> silly, here's, a let- here's a head of lettuce. And it's just like some bacon I spray painted green. But oh, my if, gosh. I don't know if this would, get, if this would go over well. How was so the vegan cheese and it was good. I, I'm I'm dumb. I would definitely try it though. It was legitimately, and I wouldn't I wouldn't just fuck with you and say this. It was legitimately better than real cheese, and I'm not just saying that. Like if if there's vegan stuff that tastes like shit, I would say a lot of vegan restaurants they try to do intimidation of foods, and I hate it because I'm like, stop, you suck. I don't like this. I would rather just eat plain vegetables, you know, and not mess around. But he legitimately, I'm like, you are a scientist. And you know what? He doesn't have a Jeffy. Nobody else knows his <laughs> secret. So uh-huh. I said, what are you going to do? I said, what are you, I said, you need to film yourself and put it in a bowl. And he said, I know. My family said so, too. He's like, I'm going to have to do that. So, yeah. Mm. But then he's going he's gonna to keep an eye on that so, he doesn't, so no one comes and it takes him out. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. You never know. 
But I'm, oh, I'm, I'm a big fan of almond milk and cashew milk, so... So being a vegan, we're not going to have these awkward pictures in front of these giant elephants that you got from, like, a helicopter or something like that. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I can't believe they're just doing that shit over there. That's crazy. And then these people, these... People with high profiles, they got their pictures all over the internet, being super proud. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's I I don't even have words for that level of stupidity of things that you could go do. Like I could literally just rattle off a hundred things that would be way more fun and awesome than just shooting innocent, beautiful, majestic animals. Like seriously, that's stupid. Stop. You know, like. People that eat meat or whatever, like you eat cow, chicken, whatever, fine. Like, I get it. You were raised that way. It's excusable. It's acceptable by society. But these people that are, like, they gain an interest in, like, hunting down tigers and lions and elephants in, like, a different continent and all the trouble they go through to get there and do Mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, why? That's insane. You're an insane person. Mm -hmm. You need to be hunted. Yeah, and I even Maybe. see some a lot of them now with like giraffes, and it's just like stuff that I wouldn't even think would be, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to run away, they're not going to attack you. So I don't see uh, what. Oh, would be they're the... so smart in this stuff. It really, they'll just go in a helicopter, so you're flying over the animal and just shoot it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's I mean, ridiculous. what kind of what kind of fair game is that? You know, this is what I say: if you want to go kill that animal with your bare hands, if you want to go face to face with that <laughs> animal and go try to tackle it down with no weapons, if you go have the same advantages that that animal has, go for it. Go mm-hmm. for it, and I want to watch. Let me see what happens to your ass. You know, like let's see that. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm right with you. It's one thing to kill something if you're going to eat it, um, but just just for the hell of it that's it's messed up it is it really is um i didn't want to ask is there any similarities between uh the daisy character and yourself i uh, i would say she's definitely a people pleaser that's me she's um very worried what other people think about her that's me but i think that's everyone to some extent um she's you know, it stays in situations to make money. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. me. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot, you know. Um, she's obviously sexually objectified. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of similarities. But um, one thing that's completely different is my strength. You know, like Daisy doesn't have a backbone and I have a, a hell of a backbone. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I start getting a little down and it starts getting a little weak here in L.A. This is a real tough city. It's very dog eat dog. But I just, man, I'm so glad I moved out here. If anything, just for the mental, like, you know, like it's going like through, through mental boot camp being here. Like, wow, like you have to be so strong willed to be out here and put up with all the BS that's out here. I mean, being from Indiana, everyone's so nice. (laughs) Nobody has an agenda and nobody cares who you know or how much money you have. Everybody is just like living and they work their job, their whatever it is. They they're a cashier or they're a factory worker, and they have a family, and that's all that matters. And everyone goes home each night, and they hang out with their friends, and they hang out with their family, and they go to the lake on the weekends. And life is simple. And here, it's the opposite. It's just you know you have to, you have to really really be careful. Yeah. So it's but like I said, I wouldn't take it back for anything because just the knowledge that I've gained and also just to know what people are capable of. I don't know. It's just, it's really fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said, you said you're 25 now. I'm 28. Okay. 28. But you're fairly young compared to a lot of the people out there. Are you worried at all that you could slip into this kind of manipulative, jaded person that you're witnessing around you? Oh, hell no. No way, girl. I tried. I tried because it would be easier to be that way. It would be so easy to be cold hearted and calculated and just use people and get what you want and get the fuck out. It would be so I would be like at the top right now if I was capable of it. But I can't. I cannot use people. I cannot take advantage of them. 
when I was with Charlie, he did, he didn't have that meltdown yet. We were dating for six months before that happened, and nobody even knew we were dating. And it wasn't until he had a meltdown, then all of a sudden we became public, you know, like it's like, I am not out here for any of that kind of like what people may think that I am. It's not like that at all. And I mean, so it's, it's just impossible. I'm just, I'm not built that way. I've tried. I've cried a lot of tears for how much I've got fucked over by people. And I keep telling myself like, Oh, you should be that cold hearted bitch, blah, blah. And I can't do it. The only thing that I can do is remain strong and remember where I came from and what I rose up from and what I've been through. And I just keep doing me, you know, it's like, it's like the song, do the right thing. Um, I forget what the group is called, but I just, I love that song so much. And I just, I live by that. I just live by that song. Would you say, would you say, uh, most people have been supportive in you, uh, pursuing a career in acting and, or is there anybody on the other side who, uh, resents it or anything? Uh, on like from the porn side. Yeah. I don't talk to anybody from porn. My best friend, uh, he is a porn agent, but besides him, I literally talk to nobody, nobody, like no actresses, nothing. I was never friends with them when I was in it and I'm not friends with them now. Um, I don't know why they all didn't like me. I really don't. I don't, I don't know every, I've heard stories like they'll say, Oh, like I heard that you had demanded Coca-Cola on set or something, you know, (laughs) and I'm like, what? Like, that's crazy. But, um, yeah, you know, and I'm like, I don't know where these stories circulate, but I'm like, whatever. But I was, I always kept to myself. Maybe that's what did it, you know, and people got this idea of me. I'm not sure. I mean, it's only because I was so shy. I mean, I, I mean, I started when I was 19, you know, I'm like a teenager. I was scared. (laughs) Um, so, but now I'm completely like a lot more open with people and everything. So I feel like people's attitudes and mainstream have changed, but yeah, I don't know how people in the industry, they're probably like, whatever, you know, like, or, you know, they compare me to Sasha Gray, I'm sure. And like, uh, yeah, I, I think Sasha's great. Um, I have nothing but positive things to say about her. We're two completely different people. She does her own thing. I do my own thing. And yeah, so I'm. I don't. I have no idea what people would say about me. I don't know. Besides, uh, at the premiere itself, uh, what what has the um what what have people the response been for Human Centipede three? Like uh, fans of yours and people you've talked to. Do I so I go mostly off of my Twitter. I can't even look at my Facebook because the comments are so terrible. I literally don't look at the comments. Uh-huh. I just post and get right back the fuck off. I'm like I can't even look at this. I just have three million people just telling me to kill myself, and I'm like I can't. Wow. Um, but Twitter, that's like mine. Twitter, no, no. do what? I said that's like mine, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they're, oh okay. <laughs> um, but like Twitter and Instagram, they're like really sweet, and it's a uh, much easier to go through and block people and <laughs> uh-huh. that are being sick. So I, I, I have a do what? I'm just laughing uh, about blocking people. Oh. So, um, so uh, yeah, I, just, I have a really uh, good percentage of like, I think it's like probably 98% for my Instagram and Twitter of positivity, which is awesome. That's like a really, really high percentage for someone like me uh, that has, I could raise so much controversy in so many areas. And so, um, yeah, when they tweet about um, Human Centipede, you know, that they loved it or that they loved my performance or what have you, I retweet it or say thank you. You know, it's just like kids you just give them positive reinforcement and then the other kid sees it and they're like oh if i'm nice then i will get paid attention to you <laughs> and that's just what i do uh-huh. when you when you did see it and uh now you knew the, the scenes that, that you had filmed but um seeing some of the scenes maybe you weren't around that were being filmed uh were there any scenes in there like, oh, wow, I didn't expect this to be in the movie? No, I mean, I was there for about 30 days. And so they did a lot of shooting in between my scenes. You know, I had um, a, a, quite a bit of downtime. So I got to see a, most of what they shot. So, no, I I knew almost everything that they shot. I had either been there for partial of that scene. And so I had seen it, you know, from the back or, um, yeah, something along those lines. So there wasn't, no, I can't think of anything that, that surprised me or shocked me. Or I could hear them. <laughs> I could hear Dieter screaming and flying. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Having spent so much time on set and being able to observe 
what other actors are doing. Did you see anyone's performances and say, wow, that's amazing and that's something I would want to incorporate into what I do as an actor? I feel like, I feel like all actors, um, you, I, I try to take away any, anything. There's, there's not one person in particular that I can think like, wow, I really want to take that and steal that and make it mine. Um, but just everyone, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, I think that was really cool or that was a cool technique or um, even just watching how they rehearse their lines and like everyone, everyone has their own thing though. You know, it's really important. I've learned that because it's like, there's not just one way. I, I would never buy a book on, how to learn your lines or how to do this or how to do that, because it's just, it's not true for everyone. Everyone is so completely different and there's no right way to do it. You have to find a way and it's just trial and error. And you just try every single way until you finally find a way that works for you. Like for me, the easiest way for me to learn my lines is to not even look at the script and to hand my, one of my friends, luckily I have a lot of friends that are willing to spend hours with me doing this, but I will hand my friends the script and I'll say, okay, you read all the other parts and I'll read my part. And, and I'll be like, uh, and I'll literally guess what I say. So if they're like, hey, Brady, thanks for showing up to the club tonight. I'll be like, thank you. It's good to be here. And they'll be like, yeah, that was close, actually. It's, hey, guys, thank you for coming and seeing my comedy show. And, you, and then I'll just go from there, you know. And, and then we just keep on doing it and doing it and doing it over and over again until I just have it memorized because – reading it and saying it and delivering it are so different for me. So just being able to not even see the script, it actually really works for me. Hmm. Well, if that makes any sense, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, everybody has a method. (laughs) It sounds like you're trying to do it through an intuitive way. How would a person respond in this situation? And that makes sense in your head. And so it's easier to remember because it's more real. Yeah, it, it, it just it sticks with me more because then it's like something that actually really just happened. And then also such an important part of acting is, is your reaction to how what the other person is saying. So instead of just highlighting my lines on a piece of paper and focusing on my lines, if I just hand the script to someone and I don't have a script, I can just look at them and really listen and take in what they say. And that's why I'm like almost able to guess my lines most of the time, at least get somewhere along of what I was going to say, because that's naturally what someone would say back, you know? So unless it's just a whole bunch of long, long ass dialogue of just me, um, that's how I, that's how I do it. Yeah. If it's a lot of back and forth with another person, I'll easily have just have a friend come over and just hand them the script any day. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're gonna travel around the world, is that just uh, is that just pleasure, or will you film any of that and uh, maybe put up on YouTube or, or do some kind of project with it? I have I have been approached by people because you know I've told a few of my friends about it, and of mm-hmm. course my friends are so freaking Hollywood, you know. They're like, oh my gosh, I know this executive producer, that blah blah blah, and I'm like, stop stop, wait, before we even go this, I'm like, I don't want to. I just, I want this for me. This Mm -hmm. is for just exploring myself and exploring the world and learning. And I don't want to do that. Now, I'm not saying I won't take video and stuff and Mm -hmm. like, you know, possibly use it later on, but there is definitely nobody coming with me. Like, I'm not even going, there's no bring a friend along. There's nothing. I'm going alone by myself traveling the whole world and it's just for me and I, I don't know what's going to come of it, but I feel this is a great opportunity for me. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, my award to myself for like, yay, you didn't get knocked up and you didn't get married. You know, it's like, good. Like go do something now because I'm not left down, you know, like I don't have anything holding me back. And all of my friends back in Indiana, they're married or they have kids or both or whatever. And they always say to me, they're like, you're so lucky that you will get to do whatever you want. And I think to myself, well, I don't really do anything. I just work, you know? And, and then I thought, well, okay, I should take advantage of this then. Like they're right. I can do anything I want. And so I'm going to go do what I want. And, um, yeah. So it was great to have you on. It's been it's been a lot Thank of fun you. talking to you. Yeah, honestly, since seeing you at the premiere, we both were like, "Wow, she's she, not that we didn't think you would be fantastic, <laughs> but you never know." But seeing you speak was just, "Wow, she's super super cool person in general." 
We'd love to have you on the show and hear you've been super cool, awesome person. Thank you so much, Annabelle. I appreciate that. Yeah, And you can even <laughs> go back and listen to the archive shows. It's not something we just made up. We actually did say that about you. <laughs> Aw, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how can people right. find you? They can find you on Twitter, at Brie Olson. Twitter, at Brie Olson. Instagram, at Brie Olson. Olson is O-L-S-O-N. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, bye. Hello, this is Lawrence R. Harvey, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Although, how you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com without your head, I, I, I simply don't know.